So let's get started with creating an order form page. What we would like to do is create a page that is very similar to the one that you're looking at here on the screen. To do that, from the customer drop down menu, select resources and then click go. Scroll down to the very bottom of the page and then click the order form generator button. Once here, you'll be presented with four different sections. The first section is page specific options, which allows you to set the overall appearance of the web page we're creating. For our example, we'll select include a company logo at the top, a message across the top, and also a message across the bottom. In the product specific options section, you'll enter the number of products you wish to sell on the page. We do not recommend you have dozens and dozens of products on a single page. If you're selling a lot of items, we recommend you work with our EPN cart solution. You may also create a page that when items are bought, it decrements inventory items automatically. And that is precisely what you can do with our optional EPN inventory system. If you selected this option, you would select the inventory items you want to sell on the next page. For this example though, we will just leave specify products checked and with just one product. Advanced options allow us to select the number of shipping options we would like to include on the page. If we'd like to include a sales tax prompt, an added convenience fee to charge a customer, or if we have the advanced recurring product, which we'll cover in another video, we can select the recurring plan to use for this page. What we'll do is leave all items unchecked since we're not really shipping anything. The QuickBooks option is only here for those merchants who are also using the EPM plugin for QuickBooks, which allows merchants to collect QuickBooks invoice payments online. If you were to select the second option here, for example, our system will look at the number entered in this field by the customer and interpret it as a QuickBooks invoice number. And the same thing can be said for the third option, which will interpret the number as a sales receipt. Keep in mind though that if you're using these options, which is actually not our case here, you would have to only specify one product at the top. You cannot collect the multiple line items while integrating to QuickBooks. Because we're not doing a QuickBooks integration, we'll go ahead and leave the do not interpret description option checked. When you click continue, the first thing you're presented with is the URL to image directory. What we're looking for here is the directory that contains the logo image you wish to place at the top of the page we were generating. It's very important that you remember that this directory has to be accessible from the internet. We're not referring to a directory on your computer. This means that you'll have a web hosting account with a provider that allows you to upload images as well as HTML documents and so forth that you can access from the web. Once we enter the directory, we can also enter a page title. This is the title that shows up at the very top of the web browser when someone accesses your page. You now have some color options as far as the background of your page, the text color, and also the link colors when they are, for example, visited and those that have yet to be clicked on. Now, we ask for the name of the file that is inside the directory you specified at the very top. This, again, is for your logo at the very top of the page or the image you wish to display there. Now, we also ask for where you'd like to display that image. In this case, we'll just leave it centered. One of the other things that we requested was for our page to have a top message and a bottom message. So what we'll do here is just change the top message and its alignment and also the bottom message and its alignment with a custom message. Then you can enter the URL where you would like to direct customers after the transaction has been processed. The next section has to do with your products. Now here is where things can get a little bit confusing. Under item one quantity, you have an option to either allow the customer to enter the quantity which is an option you would like to give your customer when they're buying a physical product, for example. However, 
when you're collecting payments online, which is the case here, you'll want to have the quantity will always be one selected in most scenarios. In this example, again, we're collecting payments, so we'll select quantity will always be one. Under description, if you're selling products, enter the product description here, or if you're collecting payments from this form, you'll want to allow the customer to enter the description because they can enter the invoice number here, for example. And that's exactly what we'll select in this particular case. Under item one cost, you'll use the hard-coded cost if you're selling product, but allow the customer to enter the cost if they're paying for an invoice, which again we'll select in this case. Once we click generate, it'll show the result of the page we generated and discussed at the beginning of the video. Now you can go to your browser, save this file as an HTML document on your computer, and make any final changes you see necessary before you upload it to your web server or hosting account for it to actually be live on the web.